Okay, so let's talk about uh, some other things about probability. So we also need to remember one of the properties about probability. Okay, so the properties about one, like fundamental property about probability is that events are like outcomes, outcomes are predictable, predictable over long term, but uncertain over short term. Okay, so we fall into a trap a lot of times by thinking that we know what's going to happen next. Uh, we think that, you know, because a coin has landed heads a whole bunch of times in a row, that the next time it should be a tails. Now, when, when we flip a coin over and over again, we know that in the long run it's going to be 50% uh, heads, 50% tails. But it is totally possible to have uh, long runs of heads or long runs of tails in the short term. Uh, so if we have, if, a, if you flip a coin a hundred times and it lands heads a hundred times, uh, that, that is weird, but if you were to flip a coin a billion times, you would have runs that long just because it randomly happened. So we have to remember that outcomes are predictable over the long term, but uncertain over the short. And we actually get into an interesting concept, and the casinos use this to their benefit a lot. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what's known as the gambler's fallacy. Uh, so let's go to a roulette table. Well, first of all, disclaimer, if you go to a casino in the long term, you are going to lose money. And I'll show you why. So let's look at the, the roulette table. We will assume that it has like uh, seven pie slices that are equally sized. We've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, bear with me. I know they're not perfectly sized, but we're gonna go with it. We're going to number all of these. So we'll start off with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I can't count, can I? One, two, three, four, five, six, where did I miss one? Oh, because we have got the zero. Got it. Okay, I can't count. So let's color these in. They're usually two colors. They're usually black and red, but I'm going to use pink and blue because it's what I've got. So we'll have one be pink. Hopefully these colors are different enough. If not, I'll do squiggles and stripes too so that it's a little different. So we've got pink and blue, pink, then we'll do stripes again. Stripe, 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 stripe. We'll do squiggles. And we'll do stripes. And then there's one that's green. And this is very important. OK, so we're going to make our simplified roulette table. Let's first start off with the sample space. Let's determine all possible outcomes. So we've got our sample space. And for us, we're going to have green zero. It looks like go, but green zero. We're going to have red one, red one. We're going to have blue two. We're going to have red three. We're going to have blue four. We're going to have red five. And we're going to have blue six. OK, on this specific roulette table, you can only make uh, bets on if our ball, so if you don't know, a roulette, it spins around and around, we throw a ball in, and wherever the ball lands is the winning position. So we can make a bet for red, blue, or green on our table. So let's do the event for red. So we would have red one, red three, and red five. That's the event for red. The event for blue is going to equal blue two, blue four, blue six. And then for green, we're gonna have the event 
of, give me a second, green zero. Okay, so we can find the probabilities now of each of these. We know that there are seven total outcomes in the sample space. And for red, the probability, there we'll put it right here, probability of red is equal to 3 sevenths. We know that the probability of blue is then also going to equal 3 sevenths. And the probability of green is going to be equal to, sorry, 1 seventh. Okay, so we have our probabilities now and we know that in the long run, if we bet red over and over again, we would be right three out of seven times or the house, the casino would be right four out of seven times. So in the short term, the casino might win or might lose. You might, they might have to pay you money, but in the long term, you are going to have to pay more money than you win with the probability of red. Same thing for blue. It's the exact same probability. In green, we would lose more often than not. Okay, so now let's get dive into this idea of a gambler's fallacy. So let's say we are at a specific roulette table and we then we see that the past like 10 spins, we have the following. Okay, so we get red one, red uh, is it one? Yeah, red one, red three, red one, red five, green zero, red three, red three, red three, red one, and we'll do red one. Okay, so we now have this output. It has been hitting red a lot. Red, 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 green and then four more reds. Okay, so what happens in the gambler's fallacy is people see this and they think, ah, it's due to hit blue. It's due to hit blue. I should start betting blue on this table because it's due to happen. And this is false. This is absolutely incorrect. What happened in the past on this table has no, um, it has no, effect on what is going to happen on the next roll. It's still going to be 3 sevenths chance for red, 3 sevenths chance for blue, 1 seventh chance for green. The probability for that next roll is not affected by the others. The, or what we can say is that the spins of the roulette wheel are independent events for one another. If you think of this from a physics point, it's like how does any of these spins landing on red or green affect that what our next spin is going to be. So this next one, you shouldn't say blue just because you think it's been a bunch of red, nor should you say as long as the table is fair that, uh, that red is coming up because it's just been spitting out reds. The probabilities are the same. Um, picking red or blue are equally likely to happen. Green is the least likely thing to happen. The best advice would probably be to go home so you don't lose any more money. But this is really important to know that probabilities, they're predictable over the long run. If we spin this roulette table a million times, it's going to basically be 3 sevenths red, 3 sevenths blue, 1 seventh green. But over short runs, it's uncertain exactly what's going to happen. Randomness and chance are true things that happen. And in the gambler's fallacy, we have to remember that if events in fact are independent from one another, one roulette spin to the next, that all of this history does not affect what is going to happen next.